Pretty soon she comes out and she's kind of staring at me up and down. <laughs> so I says to her, well, how many cylinders that Essex got? She says, five. <laughs> then she says, how tall are you, Jimmy? So I says, six. <laughs> we got that Essex racing 40 miles an hour. Wow. Man, it's fast. Everything about it's fast. What do you mean by that, Noah? Exactly what I said. Last night when we were supposed to go pick Lizzie up at the depot, I had to go looking for him again. You know where he was? He was parked outside a Denver store sitting in that girl's car. And they were so wrapped up together, I couldn't tell where he left off and snuck the game. <laughs> I mean, if I hadn't come along, hell knows what would have happened. Yeah. <laughs> hell knows. I'm like, I'm home with her little red hat. With her what? She wears a little red hat. Well, why would you want to come home with a little red hat for? Nothing. Go on, tell him. No, you put it. I'll tell him. 
Joe was wearing a little red hat last night. Dumbo Hopkins walks up to her and says, Snooky, you gonna wear that little red hat all your life? And she giggles and laughs and says, Why well, sure hope not, Dumbo. I'm gonna give it to some handsome fella when, as, and if. <laughs> <laughs> now that ain't funny, Pop. Well, you in that deal kind of trouble you can get yourself into with a girl like that, a dumb kid like you. Why, well, pretty soon she's got you hot tied and you've got to marry her. Well, why don't you let me alone, no? Do you hear this, Pop? Well, maybe it's a good idea. What's a good idea? To let him alone. Maybe it is. All right. You want to be left alone, kid, you're alone. I don't know what you're getting so mad about. You don't, huh? You think I like looking after you all my life? I don't. How do you follow after me? How do I tie my shoelaces? How do I do long division? Well, if you don't want no advice, you think you're so smart. I ain't saying I'm so smart. Like I don't mind you telling me how to do and how to figure things out. Thanks. What I mean is I appreciate it. I, I just wish you wouldn't holler. All right, boys, that's enough. One hundred and one degrees. I just wish it would cool off at night. Oh, I don't mind a hot night. <laughs> Something about a hot night gets you well, kind of all stirred up inside. Oh, why did Lizzie come down and cook us our breakfast? Yes, I let her sleep. She must have had a rough time. I know. Comes home from the train station. Starts cleaning up her bedroom in the middle of the night. Now, there was no need for that. I cleaned the room up real nice. Well, Jimmy, when some girls ain't happy, they cry. Lizzie, she works. Well, what are we gonna do about her? I don't know. Well, we gotta do something, Pop. We gotta at least talk to her and mention. Well, who's gonna mention it? <laughs> Told you, Pop, I ain't talking. Me neither. I'm not gonna talk to her. <laughs> well, quit saying everything that Nova says. Speak for yourself. I say what Noah says because I agree with him. When I don't, I spit in his eye. Well, why don't you talk to her then? <laughs> because if we do, then she'll think we're trying to get rid of her. Well, she'll sure think the same thing if I do it. Maybe. Maybe. Well, there you go. To her father. Comes a time when a father's got to mention. Jimmy, I can't. I can't just speak right up and say, Lizzie, you gotta get married. She knows she's gotta get married. We all know. Well, then it seems there's no point in mentioning anything. <laughs> Oh, you know what? Oh, Pop, Jimmy. Hi, Liz. Smart, honey. Sure is good to be home again, isn't it? Just what the boys were saying. Sure is good to have Lizzie home again. No sign of rain yet, is there? Yeah, not a cloud in the sky. I dreamed we had a rain. A great big rain. Did you, Lizzie? Yeah. Thunderstorm. Rain coming down in sheets. Lightning flashed. And, and thunder rolled up and down the canyon like a kid with a big drum. <laughs> oh, I just looked up to that sky and I yelled and I laughed. Oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> Drive's a drop and dreams a dream. It was a nice stream, going. Nearly as good as rain. Well, now I'm here ain't rain. Sorry we picked up so late at the depot, honey, but didn't get a chance to talk about your trip. <laughs> yeah, it uh, sure looks like it perked you up. You're looking all drawn out by the heat. What was it like, a sweet river? Hotter than hell. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't see anything funny in her talking like a cow hen. I'm sorry, Noah. That's about the only conversation I've heard for a week. Well, how is Uncle Ned? Lizzie, and Alan. How's all them boys? Oh, big. <laughs> I bet they take after Aunt Amy. They talk to your off. No, they take after Uncle Ned. They just grunt. <laughs> well, uh, which one got to be the best looking of the boys, Lizzie? Oh, gosh, I, uh. <laughs> I guess Pete. Never could keep them boys straight. <laughs> Which one's Pete? He's the one with the yellow hair. Yellow hair's nice of me. It's honest. <laughs> oh, Pete was honest, all right. <laughs> well, the way you say that, it sounds like you liked him the best. Oh, I was crazy about Pete. He asked me to marry him. <laughs> Is that true, Lizzie? He, he did? What'd you say? Well, I told him I would. As soon as he graduates from grammar school. <laughs> <laughs> grammar school? Is he that dumb? No, he's only nine years old. <laughs> around the bush. I don't know why you sent me to Sweet River. Uncle Ned's got six boys. The three of them are old enough to get married. <coughs> oh my. Well, I'm sorry you went to all the expense. The railroad ticket and all the nice new clothes, but well, the trip didn't work. And you can write that in the books, Noah, in red ink. Well, what happened to Sweet River? Nothing. Not a doggone thing. Well, where'd you go? What'd you do? <coughs> I stayed up in my room most of the time. Well, what'd you do that for, Lizzie? Because I was embarrassed. You're embarrassed about what? No, well, use your head. I knew what I was there for. That whole family knew it too. I 
couldn't stand the way they were looking me over. So I'd go downstairs for my meals and I'd rush back upstairs. Packed. I unpacked. I washed my hair about a dozen times. I read the Sears Roebuck catalog from cover to cover. And finally I told myself, Lizzie Kerr, you need to snap on out of this. Well, it was a Saturday night, and, and they were all going to a rodeo dance, so, so I got this here dress on. It's my lowest cut dress, and I got my highest heels on, and I walked on down to that supper table, and all those boys, they looked at me like I was stuck naked. <laughs> well, well, then, you know, for, for the longest while, there wasn't a sound to be heard except for Uncle Ned slumping his soup. Suddenly, before I knew it, like a gunshot, Ned Jr. said, Lizzie, how much do you weigh? Oh, well, what'd you say to that? Well, I, I said I weigh 150 pounds. My, my teeth are on my own and I stand 17 hands high. That wasn't very smart of you, Lizzie. He was just trying to open conversation. I guess I closed it then. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, uh, about ten minutes later, little Pete, he came rushing to the supper table and he had a geography book with him. And he said, Pop, where's Madagascar? <laughs> of course, they all ventured up an opinion, of course, they were all dead wrong. Suddenly, I, I felt like I had to make a good impression. So I, so I said, well, it's an island off the Indian Ocean, off the coast of Africa, right opposite of Mozambique. <laughs> Well, can I help it if I'm good in geography? <laughs> well, what happened then? Man, there wasn't a sound to be heard. It sounded like the end of the world. And then Ned Jr. says, Lizzie, are you fixing to be a school mom? Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> Suddenly, I felt like I was back at the high school dance again and nobody dancing with me. I got this sick feeling in my stomach. I was wearing eyeglasses the way I used to. From that minute on, I, I knew it was a no-go. So I didn't go to the rodeo dance with them. I, I stayed at home and I made up poems about what was on sale at Sears Robux. <laughs> <laughs> you and uh, little Pete. Yes. When that day I left Sweet River, oh, little Pete, he was bawling. He said, Lizzie, you're the beautifulest girl there ever was. <laughs> He's right, you are. Pop, please. Oh, we see you that way. He saw you that way. Not as big brothers. That's well, because you didn't show yourself right. And I tried, Pop, I tried. Oh, you didn't. You hid behind your books and your eyeglasses. Don't even wear them no more. Lizzie, you're afraid of being beautiful. I'm afraid to think I am when I know I'm not. Lizzie, me and the boys, we put our heads together and we thought we'd Mention something to you. Yes. Well, you want to tell about now? No problem, it's your idea. Well, after me and boys get some work done, we're going to ride into Three Point this afternoon, go by the sheriff's office, and speak to his deputy. Uh, file? Yep, file. Oh, well, Pop, that, that's silly. I'm well, just going to invite him to supper. Well, if you do, I won't be here. I can invite a fellow to supper in my own house, can I? Pop, I don't need you to go lasso a husband up for me. I can do nothing of the kind. Hell, I won't even mention your name. We'll, we'll start talking about a card game, maybe, and we'll get around to supper before you know it'll be sitting right there in that chair. No, no! Lizzie, we're going no matter what you say. Now, hold on, Pop. I'm against this. Now, if Lizzie says it's okay to go, go down and talk to Father, I'll go right along with you. But one thing, if she says no, we don't go. And that's what I say, no! Well, don't listen to no. Every time you and Jim got to scratch your back, you turn around and ask no. That's right, because he's the only sensible one around here. Pop, the, the three of us, we get carried away, and who knows what would happen. Well, get carried away, it won't hurt you. Not one bit. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Oh, what's so dumb about it? It's a matter of pride. Is that what it is, then? Pride? I mean, if you want to go invite someone to supper, you go right ahead, but not file. He doesn't even know I'm on earth. Well, he knows, Lizzie. He knows. No, he doesn't. Whenever we ride into town, he's got a great big hello for you and no one, Jimmy, but he's got nothing for me. He barely sneaks his hat off his head, and that's all. You know, he makes a point of ignoring me. Lizzie, when a fellow makes a point of ignoring you, he ain't ignoring you at all. <laughs> now, how about it? File for something? No. No, I, I don't like him, so no. No! Lizzie, 
you don't like it, you can say no one time, and you can say it quiet. All right. I don't like him. I, I don't like the way he, he, he sticks his thumbs in his belt, and I don't like the way he always seems to be thinking deep thoughts. I thought you liked people with deep thoughts. <laughs> Lizzie, when you were a little girl, if I ever thought you were lying, I'd say to you, honest and true, you wouldn't lie to me no more. But I'm asking you now. You don't like fire? <coughs> honest and true? Oh, that's silly. I'm asking you a question, Lizzie. Honest and true. Oh, that's a silly childish game, and all you're going to get from me is a silly childish answer, and I refuse. I simply refuse to just... Oh, for God's sake, don't want anybody. Okay! <laughs> Come on, boys! Lizzie, you cooked us up a great supper. It's sad, no? 